In today's video, I'm gonna run you through my top five nightclubs that I've been fortunate enough to visit all over the world. Now, yes, this is a little bit different to what I typically post on this channel. I normally focus on DJ tutorials, unboxings, vlogs, DJ advice, that kind of thing. But I absolutely love nightclubs. I love visiting nightclubs. Of course, I'm a working DJ. I like DJing in nightclubs, but I do like going to visit other ones and I like seeing other DJs perform. If this is something that you like, please do give me a thumbs up. And if I get 100 likes on this video, I will also drop my five worst nightclubs that I've been to around the world. There is one caveat to this video, and that is I'm only covering the clubs that I have actually visited in person. Of course, there are tons of nightclubs all around the world that you know are world class, they're world beating. However, if I haven't visited them, then I can't comment on them. So I'm only focusing today purely on the clubs that I have visited around the world. In at number five then, and this is Barbarella's Discotheque in Croatia. Now, I went to this club back in 2022 as part of the Defected Festival in Croatia, which is held every year at a place called the Garden Resort in a town called Tisno. I have got a vlog on the channel featuring this festival, so do check that out if you are interested. Barbarella's though is a really unique club in my opinion, it's brilliant. It is literally a dance floor in the middle of the forest. <laughs> That's the only way to describe it. You have to get there by bus. Um, usually the after parties from the festival that, held, that are held at this garden resort in Tisno, the after parties are held at Barbarella's. So you get a bus from um, the garden resort and they ship you over to um, this club. But it's in the middle of the woods. You're surrounded by pine trees, which is incredible. It's like just so surreal, dancing under the stars in this forest. And it's not muddy or anything because it's got a proper dance floor but it's just quite a unique setting. And what I love about it is, and I'm not a massive fan of outdoor venues. You're outside, um, I'm not a huge fan of outdoor venues. Like I don't like massive festivals that are outside. I, I don't know why, I'm just not a fan of it. But in here, you, you kind of feel like you're in a club right, versus outside. But what I like about it is that everyone's an equal here. There's one dance floor. There's no emphasis on the DJ because the DJ booth is tiny. It's tucked away in the left-hand side in the corner. There's no big fancy LED screens. There's no big fancy production. There's just a few disco lights, a wicked sound system. And it's just a fun time for everyone. Everyone's equal here. There's no VIP. There's no spending money for booths or anything like that. You just kind of go there. Buy, buy some drinks, have a good time in the forest and then get the bus back afterwards. Absolutely brilliant. My number four slot goes to Papagayu or Papagayu Club in Tenerife. Maybe a bit of an odd choice to put in this ranking, but I absolutely love this club. It certainly doesn't appear in the top 100 clubs in the world or anything like that, but I absolutely love it. I've been there a couple of years in a row and it certainly did not disappoint me. It's got a brilliant sound system, it's got brilliant lighting, it's got LED screens that wrap around the whole venue, so it's really unique. And it is outdoors, as I say, I don't really like outdoor venues, so this is probably an odd choice, but because you're so enclosed, it doesn't really feel like you are outside. In terms of why I like this club, number one, it's very, very diverse. It caters to a very diverse audience. If you go on some nights, you get electronic music like what I like, so house, techno, tech house, etc. If you go on other nights, you get Latin music. If you go on another night, you might get R&B music. So it caters to a nice, diverse audience. And it's definitely one of those clubs that's not trying to be more than what it is, okay? It's in Tenerife versus Ibiza, but it is the closest you'll get to Ibiza-style clubbing in Tenerife, in my opinion. It's located in Playa Las Americas, um, which is kind of no notorious for those sort of party bars where a lot of British people go. But with Papagayu, which is on the end of this sort of strip or road of bars and clubs, it definitely sets the bar quite high in comparison to those other venues, in my opinion. But at the same time, it's not outpricing itself. Entry is affordable. You can get tickets for like 10, 20 euros to get in. So you're not paying, as I said, Ibiza style prices, but it is Tenerife. 
and also the drinks are affordable as well. So I feel like it's just a good all-round value club. It's not the biggest, but it certainly does what it does very, very well. So Papageu, my number four. Moving into the top three then, and in third place for me is Omnia in Las Vegas. Now, unlike any other club in this list, okay, Omnia is all about money. Omnia is very pretentious. It is um, very VIP centric. It's got a lot of VIP booths that literally line the dance floor, that line the walls. And so you're probably wondering why the hell does it make this list? In fact, Omnia is just like every other club in Las Vegas. However, I feel like with production, it's one of those venues that you really have to see to believe. It is honestly mind blowing. The sound in there, the production, the lighting is just insane, next level. Take your favorite club in terms of production that you have visited, times it by 10 and you've got Omnia. They've got this moving chandelier that moves up and down and it has different sort of levels like rings in it and the whole thing like expands out. It looks like a UFO and there's loads of videos of it online. However, I feel like you have to see it to believe it. I know that sounds a bit weird um, and I don't normally like VIP centric clubs. I'm not a massive fan of the VIP thing. Uh, I do think it takes away from the dance floor. But Omnia is just ridiculous uh, when it comes to uh, light and sound and hence why it makes my top five list. Yes, you're not going to get brand new music there. It's very commercial, it's very EDM led. So it's not revolutionary in terms of breaking new tracks. You're gonna get very, very sort of high end sort of people that go there that probably aren't really there for the music, hence why it's got to have mass appeal. But in terms of just the sheer production and you can just tell it's one of those places where it's no expense spared. And that is why it makes my top five. Omnia in Las Vegas. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. And so we have the final two clubs. In second place then, just beating the top slot, is Fabric in Farringdon, London. Yes, home soil for the venue that makes my second place. I absolutely love Fabric, completely the opposite to Omnia in Las Vegas. The emphasis in this club is about the music and also the dance floor. You won't find a lot of VIP in fabric whatsoever. Everyone is an equal at fabric. I love the fact that they cover your phone camera with a sticker when you walk in so you won't find a load of people filming all night. In fact, if you are caught filming in fabric, you are politely asked to leave. Obviously, you get a warning the first time round, but if you are caught filming multiple times, they will ask you to leave, um, which is, in my opinion, quite a unique thing in this day and age and in this era of mobile phones. Fabric doesn't place a lot of emphasis on uh, the DJs, like it doesn't put them on a big pedestal. I know sometimes it does move them onto a stage, but for the most part, they're in the DJ booth, in the corner, and all emphasis is just on the sound and the dance floor. And that's what I love about it. It's very, very down to earth in terms of a venue. Um, Back in the day, before it was a nightclub, I think it was a meatpacking factory or a meatpacking warehouse and that industrial kind of feel with the exposed brickwork, etc., is still very, very present to this day. So if you are in London and you want a good night out and you want a real underground feel, because Fabric is a very underground venue, you will not find many commercial acts playing there then do check out Fabric. I think it's an absolutely brilliant venue. And then finally, my number one club anywhere around the world, the top slot, drum roll, it goes to Amnesia in Ibiza. I absolutely love Amnesia. It is one of those venues that hasn't really changed much over the years. Um, I feel like with Ibiza clubbing, a lot of it has evolved. If you look at space back in the day, it's now obviously changed to high. High is a lovely club. It's got a big dance floor, but it's still got a VIP kind of centric feel to it. It's a little bit more like a, a Vegas club in Ibiza. It's very expensive. It's very premium. 
Amnesia is completely, well, Ibiza in general is expensive. Amnesia is expensive, but Amnesia is the opposite in terms of the premium feel. Amnesia is basically a warehouse and a huge dance floor. VIP you can do, but it's tucked away on the balcony so it doesn't interfere with the dance floor. It's very unintrusive. It's got two massive dance floors, two massive sound systems, and I've had some incredible nights in Amnesia. Yes, you are gonna pay a premium for entry and you're gonna pay a premium for drinks in there just because that is just Ibiza. However, it's a very historic venue and I don't feel it's changed too much over the years. It's still got that traditional Ibiza nightclub feel and it is one of the last remaining traditional Ibiza nightclubs in my personal opinion. A lot of Ibiza now is moving across to day parties and VIP beds and this whole VIP culture and Amnesia is still got a little bit of the old Ibiza left in it, in my personal opinion. If space was still around, that would be my number one club, but it is no longer space. High doesn't make my top five, unfortunately. It's still up there, but it doesn't make my top five. So the top slot for me goes to Amnesia. And also that massive ice cannon that they've got on the terrace is absolutely ridiculous. It's better than these little CO2 cannons that every other club has. This thing fills the whole room. You can't see a thing. And it is just honestly like ridiculous. So yes, Amnesia, my favorite club around the world. I absolutely love it. So there we go, my top five clubs all around the world. Of course, these are only the nightclubs I have been fortunate enough to visit. There are tons of other nightclubs out there that of course I can't really talk about because I haven't been there, but I'm sure at some point I will get to visit them. Um, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments and if this video does get 100 likes, so please do give me a thumbs up, I will do my list of top five least favorite clubs in the world, so completely the opposite, and that list will surprise you. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that. Do subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.